Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. Today we're going to continue on with part 5 of the tutorial series on creating a third person cover shooter. Now, if you closed and reopened the project, you'll probably notice that it'll open up to a default map instead of the map we created before. One thing you can do to remedy that is go to Edit, Project Settings, click on Maps and Modes, and under Default Maps, there's the option for Editor Startup Map. You can click the little down arrow and select our test map. And what that'll do is whenever the editor is loaded, that will load our test map up for us. So today, I wanted to continue on by getting our character to stop when he reaches the end of cover. Right now, if we go ahead and hit play, we can take cover with our character and he can move left and right but when he gets to the end of cover, he pops out of cover. I want to stop him before he gets to the end of cover. So he'll end up sitting at the edge of cover like this, but I want him to do it automatically. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to go into our interfaces and we're going to open up our cover interface. And to the right hand side here, I'm going to click on adding a new function. And we're going to call this function end of cover. And this end of cover function is going to have two inputs. They're both going to be boolean. First one I'm going to call end of cover left. And the second one I'm going to call end of cover right. So I can go ahead and compile and save that and close it. The next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open up our cover object. So I'm going to go into our maps folder and our common objects folder and I'm going to go ahead and open up our base cover object. Now I added comment boxes around our cover boxes from before just so we know the difference between the cover box one and the cover box two. If we go into our viewport we have these two cover boxes on each side. And what we're going to want to do at this point is add in a few more collision boxes. So I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to search for box. We'll select box collision. And I'm going to need in this one end of cover one left. And I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one end of cover one right. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again. This will be end of cover two left. And one more time. We'll make an end of cover two right. All right, so in the viewport, we're going to want to take these boxes and place them appropriately. So if I select cover box one, it's going to be on this side and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to parent these cover boxes to the original cover box. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the height to zero because it's centering on the cover box for both of these. And then if you look at the X position on our cover box, it's at 82. So I'm going to put these at 82. Correction, I'm going to put these at zero because they're centered on the cover box. So that I'll place them in the center here. And then I'm going to take this end of cover one left and I'm going to slide it over to the left hand side of the piece of cover from the viewpoint of when we're looking at the cover. So that puts us at a Y position of, we'll just call it 40. Then we're gonna take cover right, and we're gonna put the Y position at negative 40. Then we're gonna come over to our other cover box here. I'm gonna grab end of cover two left and parent it to cover box two. And the same thing with end of cover right. So we'll take end of cover left, we'll set the X to zero, 
and we want this to be a z of 0 as well and then the y was 40 either way so for this one we're going to put in negative 40 and that'll put it to the left of the cover as we're facing it and we're going to do the same thing to our end of cover right with the exception of the y is going to be a positive 40 and now we have cover boxes on each end that we are going to use to pass signals through to our character to let him know he's reached the end of cover. So we're going to go into the event graph and a quicker way of adding overlap events is when you highlight a component in the components tab. If you right click on it, add event, select begin overlap, and we're going to do the same thing with end overlap. And we're going to want to do these for all four cover boxes. Okay, so at this point we're going to have eight new events on our chart here. And I'm going to separate these up so that the rights or the cover box two is with cover box two and cover box one is with cover box one. So at this point, we're going to want to go ahead and send a message from these. So if we drag off the end of cover box left one, we're going to search for that new function that we just added called end of cover. And we want to select the message. And what we're going to do for each one of these is we're going to set it appropriately whether there is going to be the end of cover on each side. So we're going to have to first connect up the other actor to the target. And then for the end of cover one left, we're going to check true for the end of cover left. And I'm going to just go ahead and copy and paste these in. And then we'll hook up the execution pin with the target pins. Now for both of the events on the end overlap, we're going to want to clear these variables out. So we want neither one of them to be true. And then for the cover box end of cover right, we want to have only end of cover right true. So we can actually take all this, copy it and paste it to the other side because it's going to function exactly the same. We just have to connect our execution pins and our target actor pins. And you just want to make sure that when you connect everything up that it is correctly placed in the same order as on the other side. So you want the end of cover to left to set end of cover left to true. The end of cover to right to set end of cover right true and the other two boxes on the end overlaps to set both to false. Now one thing I want to add in here as well is we're going to use a function from the actor. So we're going to drag off of our other actor and we're going to type in does implement and a function will come up that says does implement interface. So I'm just going to rearrange this so I can fit it in here. And we're going to select our cover interface. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to promote this to a variable. And we'll call that variable cover interface. And we're going to go ahead and put a branch in after this and we're going to connect our branch from the does implement interface function. We're going to run the execution pin into our branch and if it's true we'll connect up to is cover available. 
And we can actually shorten this up a little bit here. As so. So what I'm doing here with this does implement interface function is it's checking to see whether the other actor that's overlapped with it actually uses the interface before we even send the message. So if there's other things that are going to be in our environment that don't actually implement that interface, it's not even going to bother sending the message. So that'll save us a little bit on CPU power. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select these. the cover interface, the does implement interface in the branch. And I'm going to copy them and I'm going to go ahead and add these into all of our other overlap events. All right, so now that we have that done, just want to double check and make sure that on each and every single one that the other actor is plugged into the test object in the does implement interface function and that the execution pins are connected up from the event overlap to the branch to the actual function we're running itself. And I'll just go ahead and uh, make it a little bit more neat. All right, so now that we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and add some common boxes around these. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit compile and save, and we can exit out of our base cover object. Now we're gonna go back into our character, and in the player character folder, we're gonna open up the anim blueprint. And we're gonna go into our anim graph. We wanna back out to the overall anim graph here. And we're gonna have to change up some of the rules for walking left and walking right. So over here, uh, we're going to start with cover left to cover walk left first. So in the transition rule from cover left to cover walk left, we're going to add in a new statement here. And we're going to add a new variable. And we're going to call this end of cover left. And we're going to want to check this variable. So we're going to get it. And we want to make sure that in order to walk left, this is false. So we're going to select the not operator. And then we're going to put in a and operator. And we're going to plug these pins in. And then we're going to go back. And for the transition rule, from cover walk left to cover left. We're gonna open that up. And we're gonna get our end of cover left over here. And we're gonna put in an or operator. And we're gonna connect our move right check to it and plug it into the output. And we're gonna move back. And then we're going to go over to our cover right to cover walk right transition. And we're going to have to add in a new variable at this point. We're going to call it 
end of cover right. And we want to check against this to see if it's false. So we're going to put a not operator in. And then we're going to put a and operation. Connect our move right check and connect it to the output. And for the return from cover walk right to cover right, we're going to get our end of cover right. Add in an OR operator. Connect our move right check to it. And then plug it into the output. And we'll go ahead and compile and save. And we're going to have to go over to our 3P player character. Now, I'm going to take this uh, cover available event here. I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to right click in the graph. And I'm going to search for end of cover. And we're going to add the event end of cover. So when it runs into something that calls on this interface, we're going to get this. We're going to take end of cover left and we're going to promote to a variable and we'll call that end of cover left. And we're going to take end of cover right and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to promote to a variable and we're going to call it end of cover right. And we're going to connect these pins up. And then I'm going to take this whole section where the event is cover available and the event end of cover and I'm going to put a comment box around it. And I'm going to call this cover events. And also we have our take cover action down here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a comment box around that and we'll just call it take cover for now. So at this point we can compile and save. We're going to go back to our Anim BP, and we actually now want to go into the event graph and these cover variables are coming from our player character so at this point I am going to drag off of our cast to our character and we're going to get end of cover left and we're going to get our end of cover left variable and set it and we'll connect this up and then we're going to do the same thing for end of cover right All right, we'll go ahead and we'll hit compile and save. We'll head back over to test map and let's see how it works. So if we move up to the center of the cover here and we enter cover, we're gonna go ahead and start moving right. And our player at this point has stopped moving right. Now we're gonna to have to make some adjustments to the sizes of those end of cover boxes so our character will actually make it to the end of cover. But we'll try the one on the left too and he'll stop moving right there. So we're going to close out of this. We're going to go back into our base cover object. At this point, I'm going to twiddle around with the size of these cover boxes and scale them down on the y-axis a little bit to make them a little bit smaller. So we'll compile and save and we'll test it out again. and I'm going to be satisfied with that. We don't want him stopping directly butted up against the very, very end of the cover because he's going to be holding a weapon later on and we might have to adjust this some more to 
take into account that weapon. But for now, we have the ability to walk along the edge of cover and our player will stop when he hits the end of cover. All right, so the next thing I want to go ahead and address is our cover movement once we're in cover. If our character ends up taking cover right now, we hit the A key, he moves to the left, and we hit the D key and he moves to the right. That's perfectly well and good as long as we're facing the same direction as the character. But if I turn the camera around and I hit the A key, he moves to his left, not the camera's left. Same thing with moving the D key. And then to get out of cover, I have to hit the S key, which is back towards the camera, to have him move backwards relative to him. So we're going to make a change to the 3P player controller so that the direction is going to be based relative on the camera and not the character. So we're going to have to take our movement input up here. And in order to do this, I had to actually sit down and uh, do some math and draw out a couple of diagrams in order to get it uh, to a sense where I knew what to do with it. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this comment box for now. And we're going to have to make some changes here to our move inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all the pins and just drag these off to the side for now. So if you ever thought that trigonometry would never help you out in life, this is a very good instance of specifically how to use trigonometry to figure out where you want to go with the character. So the very first thing we're going to do is I'm going to right click in the graph and I'm going to go ahead and get control rotation. And then underneath that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the player pawn. And from the player pawn, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to get the actor rotation. And then I want to add in a delta between these two values. So we have the rotation that our camera or our controller is facing because the camera follows the controller. And then we have the rotation that the pawn is facing. So I'm going to drag off of get control rotation and we're going to search for delta. And there's a delta rotator. And we're going to link up the get actor rotation to the B pin there. So what this is doing is it's getting the difference between our control rotation and our actor rotation. I'm going to take this rotator and I'm going to go ahead and break the rotator. The reason I'm breaking the rotator is we only care about the yaw. We have no interest in the pitch or the roll of the control. And this is where things are going to start getting really fun. So we're going to drag off of our yaw here and I'm going to search for cos. And we have the cosine in degrees. So we want to select cosine degrees. And then we also want to drag off from that yaw and we're going to search for the sine in degrees. And then from the yaw, we're going to go ahead and Actually, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to search for the minus. So we're going to look for a float minus a float. And we want the first value to be zero. And we want to subtract the yaw value. And off of this resulting value, we're going to search for the sine in degrees. And we're also going to get the cosine in degrees. So from here, we're going to have to actually take our inputs and we're going to multiply the values of these inputs by these resulting values to get the appropriate direction we want to travel in. So I'm going to drag this off to the side here. And we're going to drag off of our move forward input here. And we're going to search for a multiply. So we're going to take a float times a float. And we're going to multiply this value by the cosine d at the top here. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to need four of these in total. So I'm going to go ahead and paste three more in. And we're going to drag off from the move forward into the second multiplier box. And we're going to connect that up to the sign from our top set that isn't subtracted from zero. And then we're going to have to get our move right axis. So I'm going to drag off of our input move right axis and I'm going to connect it up to these multipliers at the bottom here. And then we're going to connect the sign up to the top one and the cosine to the bottom one. All right, so I'll just neaten these up a tad. We'll drag our movement values over to the right a little bit. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to take the value from the cosine multiplier and we're gonna go ahead and add a vector or a correction of float plus a float. And we're gonna grab the result from the zero minus the yaw sign and we're going to drag that in together with the add. Then we're going to take another add and we're going to take the other two values and we're going to add those together. Now this first addition at the top is going to be our new move forward input. And this addition at the bottom is going to be our new move right input. So we're going to go ahead and connect up the move forward access to the set move forward and the set move right. And then we also have to connect our input access from the move right into the same set move forward and move right. All right, so that's gonna complete the setup for the move forward and the move right values. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna compile and I'm gonna save and we go ahead and hit, hit play and see what happens. So if our player enters character here, if I turn my rotation to the left and I hit the forward key, so the W key, he's gonna move in the direction that we're facing. Same thing if I move him over to the right and hit the forward key. All right, so one issue we're running into here is if you're at an off angle and we hit into cover here, and if I'm just slightly angled out to the left and I hit the left key, our character pulls out of cover. But if I angle off to the right and hit the left key, he moves to the left, no problem, and he moves to the right, no problem. The reason being is our get out of cover action occurs when the backwards motion is greater than zero. Or in this case, the actual move forward value is going to be less than zero. So in order to take care of this, we're going to go back into our player anim BP. And we're going to go into our anim graph here. So the moves that take us out of cover here from walking left and walking right we're checking to see if move forward is less than zero. Now we're gonna make a mod minor modification to this. I'm gonna see if it is less than negative 0.5. And I'm gonna do that for all four of the transitions coming out. 
So that's going to be from cover walk left down to cover left to idle and from cover left down to cover left to idle. And the same thing on the right over here from cover right to cover right to idle and from cover walk right to cover right to idle. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to modify this value to negative 0.5 instead of 0. And we're going to go ahead and compile and save. And we'll go ahead and play. If we move into cover and I angle off slightly, I can go ahead and walk left and walk right. until I hit about a 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to change this value up. I'm going to take out the less than modifier and I'm going to put in a less than or equals to and I'm going to make that value a negative one and connect it into our or and we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it back into our other transitions. So let's try this out. All right, at this point, he's clinging a little too hard to the cover. So the negative one value is probably a bit too much. So I'm going to make it a 0.75 value, a negative 0.75 value. Um, and we'll try that out. Now, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on when you're setting up these controls. And probably more than likely after you have other people play test it, um, you're going to make even more modifications and tweaks in order to get it to work right or work in a sense that doesn't impact gameplay in a negative manner. So we're at negative 0.75 right now and we'll try getting into cover and we'll try moving left and right. All right, and those seem like values that I'm pretty satisfied with. So we'll go ahead back. I'm going to go and save everything. So that's going to complete today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And thanks for watching.